You're listening to Well Black Sis, the podcast that helps you put your wellness first. Learn how Black women like you are putting their wellness first in their lives and striving mentally, emotionally, financially, and physically every day. I'm your host, Marilyn Painter, which you can call me Mel. Let's get started. Hey guys, welcome back to the Well Black Sis podcast. I have a really exciting episode today. Today on the podcast, we are chatting with Nana Meriwether, a former professional athlete and first runner-up at the Miss Universe 2012. Born in South Africa, Nana moved to the U.S. with her parents, went to schools in both Maryland and California, and is now the founder of an herbal wine brand called Kala Wines. We are talking to Nana today about her journey to wellness, as told on her blog, Well, There's This, her 52-week journey into all things wellness. Welcome, Nana. Such a pleasure to have you on the podcast. So I have to disclose that I became such a fan of you because in doing research for this podcast, I came across your blog and I was just like, oh my gosh, I feel seen, I feel heard, I feel like somebody else is going through what I'm going through right now. Yes. So I just want to thank you for putting it out there because sometimes we want to keep a lot of stuff in and, you know. I know. Well, thank you so much. It's going to inspire me to write more. And I guess we'll get into the blog and the writing. Um, absolutely. Um, this talk. But thank so, you. <laughs> um, you're a former athlete, like a two-time <laughs> American volleyball player at UCLA. You're a pa- former pageant title holder, like. Mm-hmm. completing Miss USA 2012 as first runner yes. up congrats and that Thank seems you. like a very f- different life from yes. right now you know that seems very busy I so know. tell me a little bit about all of that yes so as you described I went to UCLA I started at Duke and then transferred to UCLA and played volleyball at both schools but at UCLA um, I was this east coast girl at the time no one played volleyball on the east coast it was a very small percentage of athletes Mm. Um, usually they'd play basketball Uh, and so you know coming from the east coast and heading into California (laughs) was a bit daunting but I worked my way up and helped lead my team to a final four my senior year and I became a two-time All-American and during the final four is recruited to play professionally and also invited to train for the Olympic Games of 2008. So yeah, I reached the pinnacle of athleticism. Um, That's that's really rare, I suppose. And also (laughs) through my pageants, um, I, after playing sports, missed competing in something. And so I looked to pageants, which is completely different from playing sports uh, on the outside. Right. Uh, I never worn makeup. I sewed my dress for my first pageant ever, which was Miss, oh. Miss Malibu. Wow. <laughs> and because I just love making things. And I ended up winning Miss Malibu, which led me on to Miss California. And the rest is history. Um, I tried for six or seven years to win California from Miss California, and I never won. And so I moved home to Maryland and ended up winning the title of Miss Maryland US. USA, which led me on to Miss USA. And at the time, Donald Trump owned the pageant. It was live on NBC. Uh, I think the facts at that, because there was no Instagram <laughs> at, right. the point, at this point, um, there was like nothing to do on the internet. And so people would watch Miss USA every year. And through the telecast of all three pageants that the Miss Universe organization owned, which are Miss Universe, Miss USA, and Miss Teen USA, I think there's a statistic that it was one of the most watched events worldwide besides the Olympics and the World Cup. So competing even on the state level was a huge Mm -hmm. platform. And then when you made it to nationals, even more so. And in a roundabout way, I ended up winning Miss USA and I was moved to to New York and I got to live this life of, you know, travel, volunteering, giving speeches, going to red carpets and just meeting so many people in New York City. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, it was a completely different life playing sports and and competing in pageants but there is this thread that um they're both competition Mm -hmm. and they both inspire you or require you to work towards becoming the best version of yourself Mm -hmm. and so that's the commonality between the two and and why I I probably fell into both (laughs) right because I'm very drawn to that Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> well, it would seem so because you're still going. <laughs> I'm still doing it. Yeah. And I, 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 I'm very much a chameleon in that way. I, I will accomplish or complete something. And um, usually people in their lives are just an athlete and then nothing else. Um, but I, I, I'm one who likes to reinvent uh, myself. And, you know, I'm in a stage in my life where I'm building a company and working for that success. And who knows what I'll be next. But yeah. Well, you have a sister right here because I reinvent <laughs> all the time. I have done yeah. so many things in my life. And I think my friends always tell me, you're good at that one thing of recreating yourself every time. Yeah. Like every time something doesn't work, you know how to like move on to the next thing. Yeah. And, that's, and I'm like, I don't really think of myself like that. But I no, you know. it's important. It's yeah. so important. <laughs> especially now, you know, yes. especially now. Especially now, because, you know, you do get a lot of notes, like my, my path to, you know, being, you know, a, a premier athlete and, and a Miss USA, as I said, it took me six or seven years of no's to ever become even a state Miss Maryland USA. And even with volleyball growing up on the East Coast, no California schools recruited me. I had to go out and, you know, be persistent. And <laughs> I would send, there was no email, I don't think. I think I would send oh, like wow. letters to these schools. And what, what's great about these, these times though, is there's so much opportunity that uh, if you can pick yourself up from a no, there, there's always like a side door you can find. Um, and it just takes, you know, keeping that light inside of yourself alive to continue on with whatever you're pursuing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I wanted to touch, I want to touch on something. Didn't plan this question, but as you were talking about competing and becoming, you know, being in beauty pageants, mm -hmm. I wanted to bring up Chesley. I uh, don't know if you know her personally, but mm -hmm. there was something about her did you feel like you were under pressure while you were in that arena to be the best or to be perfect or to show up a certain way yeah well first my sincere condolences to Chesley and her family um, it's certainly a very tragic event that happened in our community um, and you know what's, what's come of it is um, Miss USA is we've all connected with each other now we're all in a group ch chat with each other um, for many different years spanning all the way to like you know the the 2000 like I think the earliest on the chat is maybe like 2007 or maybe even earlier awesome. but that we're now all uh growing a community because we don't want this to happen mm -hmm. ever again and right. within all of my communities um whether it's the people I played sports with or you know the people I you know work with um I'm now and I I always was but it's it's really important to check in on your friends mm -hmm. um and if someone reaches out to you um I think like you know being there for someone is 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 really important um but during the tenure yes it it is it is a very pressure filled uh, title to hold, but you know, there's a flip side to everything. It's also like one of the greatest opportunities. There's only been, I, I think I was, I, I was like the 63rd or something Miss, U yeah, Miss USA um, mm. in all of human history. And so it, 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 it takes like changing your mindset to realize, yeah, it's a lot of pressure to be on a platform and represent um, yourself in an organization, but it's, it's quite an opportunity. And so for, I'll speak for me personally, when things get tough, I, I, I really prime myself to have positive mindset and to always look for, okay, where is the light in this and how can I serve others and really get myself out of my head? Um, and I also, I'm very active in, in, in wellness. Um, I too, I mean, we all do. We, we all have really dark periods of our lives those are our greatest gifts. Um, the darkest my life ever got was around 2000, uh, the late 2017. I, mm -hmm. I was, um, I went to the doctor and found out I was on the verge of a chronic illness and I was in my early thirties. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I was faced with, you know, oh my gosh, I'm about to be sick. But you know, your mind trails to, oh my gosh, I am a mortal. <laughs> and right. you're faced with certain things like, oh, this is all going to end soon. You know, like when you're young, you think, you know, you have tomorrow. And, you know, coming up with, with 
this, this diagnosis, um, it really led me to realize that um, this is it. And how can I live my life um, the happiest and healthiest that I can be? And at the time, you know, there were things like Goop and all these channels and people talking about this thing called wellness. And I really didn't know what it was, you know, um, I just saw it as like people selling things to you, right. <laughs> like buy this crystal. I was like, what do crystals even do? And so now we, we can get into my, my, into my writing. So I went to the doctor in 2017 and they told me this, that I was on the verge of something. And I was like, no, 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 this cannot be. And so I, I came home and I sat down and I was like, how am I supposed to be like, what is health? What is happiness? At the same time, like a myriad of dates were ghosted, were ghosting me. I was on, on the apps and it, it's just oh. awful. <laughs> and so I was not happy. Like I had asked for a raise at my job and my boss said no. So like a series of things in my life were just not working out. And mm -hmm. I, I desperately wanted to know and find out how do you turn your life around? And so instead of, you know, trying to drink from a fire hose, I decided to dissect <laughs> and write about, because I loved writing mm -hmm. about what makes for great health and happiness, but taking these things you've heard of like meditation and eating less sugar and working out, like what do these things actually mean? I took a beginner's mindset and, you know, really looked up articles, science studies of like, why is meditation good for you? Why is intermittent fasting good for you? Mm -hmm. um, and I wrote about the science, but also the woo-woo parts <laughs> of right. all these, these wellness um, things that are thrown at us and trying to figure out why they worked and what they actually were. And through that process, I healed myself and I found tools to when I do get, you know, a dark day, how can I climb back out of it? So it took initiative on my end um, to kind of heal myself, which I did. I ended up completely changing my blood chemistry. And now I'm very much aware of my mind and the places it can go. <laughs> and on my dark days, I know how to pull myself out of it. But, you know, it's, it's really comes down to you with positive mindset and getting to know tools that can be helpful for when things get dark. I so much in what you're saying because I too had a somewhat devastating diagnosis um, yeah. last summer and I am on the path that you're on now where yeah. I just woke up to paying attention to mm -hmm. what I put in my body mm -hmm. what did I what I do every day because I was taking it for granted I'm on mm -hmm. I'm on the all the time so I'm always mm -hmm on a screen what is the screen doing to me and then I get on your blog and you're talking about bilberry and I'm just like where do yeah. I find that because I'm going to get it <laughs> you it's know, so but, fascinating <laughs> and I was talking to a friend um today about being present in yeah. in your wellness so now I yeah I just changed my community to well black sis because mm -hmm. I want mm -hmm. I, I really want us to be be able to define Mm. well as something that is a positivity that moves with us as yes. we move. like we've okay. got to accept that we are well yes no longer are we buying into this narrative of lack of yes being oh. sidelined and being marginalized and being all of these things and I was yeah. telling her I said I have always loved everything about herbs and yeah uh, defining i'm you know i'm caribbean so everything that mm -hmm. we did pick a bush outside and we could boil it drink the drink, mm -hmm, the water, drink mm -hmm. juice, extract whatever and we mm -hmm. come from those roots yeah but, uh, but we we were never really really present with it in 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 with the foods that we ate because a lot yes. of us have a lot of butter we eat a lot of dairy yes. we eat a lot of, yes. and it doesn't it didn't bother us because source of food back then when yes. the caribbean was different to being in america yes. now you know so I identify with all of what you're saying and I'm so present in my wellness now. I have Gosh. to ask, what does your wellness look like these days? 
Sure. Well, first, thank you for sharing and for all of your work. And um, I think we can relate that these dark times uh, for us, it was our health. Maybe it can be a breakup or a close person has died. These dark times, you're, you're currently alchemizing and turning that darkness into light and you're going to help so many people. So I, I applaud you for that. It takes a lot of courage. Um, and that and that a lot of people, you know, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll like, I'll put in Instagram stories about like the detriments of sugar. And so many people will be like, I didn't know that. Nobody told me, how come they didn't tell us this? <laughs> um, which is something you touched upon that wellness really, it, it, it is an awakening within yourself. Mm -hmm. No one's coming to save you. At some point you have to take the initiative to wake up and be like, oh, sugar, sugar is actually like, what is sugar? Ask, you need to start like asking questions. And unfortunately, usually you start asking questions when something really bad happens. Mm -hmm. But if you are in a, if you're hearing this, <laughs> your life is great and you're able to be curious, even in, in times of good, there's so much to just like the self empowerment towards um, arming yourself with knowledge to better your health and wellness. No one is coming to save you. Okay. It's I you. Think, <laughs> I think that's what people really think. Like they think the government is supposed to put stuff out there. Like yeah. even in the pandemic. The doctors. Right. Yeah. No. Like why it's the doctors you. not telling me? Well, the doctors have an agenda. You know, yeah. the agenda, you don't fit into it's, that agenda. It's so. business. Exactly. <laughs> it's business. And not to not to not to downplay doctors either, because there is a place for Western medicine. If my arm falls off, please send me to a surgeon. <laughs> but if I have a chronic, you know, something going on, I am going to take it upon myself to research, read articles, immerse myself, not only in like the reading and all this, but also communities like yours, like yeah. find women who are, you know, making it happen in their lives. Absolutely. And with that said, uh, my wellness, <laughs> I, I've, I found that there's, there's certain pillars to, and, and, it, and it all comes in waves, right? Um, I'll have waves where months are just, I'm on fire, I'm in flow and things are coming and I'm doing everything and I have the energy and I'm waking up and I'm getting things done. And then, um, you know, there are, there are months, weeks, days where I, can't, I just like can't get out of bed and if I do, it's like the most sluggish time. And I'm like, when can I go back to my bed? <laughs> and I think that's important too, because especially as women, we go through cycles, um, mm -hmm. whether it's monthly, um, you know, you are going to go through periods of like, okay, I need rest. You're not always going to be in flow, but in, in those dark periods and, and when I, and I'm, and I'm a bit, a bit slow, I look to like pillars of nutrition mm -hmm. where, um, when I'm down, that is the time, even in normal times, but oops, excuse me, that is the time when I invest in really doubling down on eating high nutrient dense foods. Mm. That is when I make myself herbal teas. That is whether I want to or not, I make my, myself a promise that today I am going to focus on, you know, eating high nutrient dense foods like I, we can we can have a whole another podcast on sure nutrients mm -hmm. and how to eat um but for me wellness starts with food um and and it's been proven that you know so much of our neurotransmitters and feel good chemicals are made in the gut and if you're eating like crap your mood is going to be crap so the first thing i do is make sure my food is on point okay from there, I, the next pillar is I, I like to move my body. You know, even if I'm in a, in a dark period, I promise myself, I'm like, okay, I'm going to eat well today. And I'm at least going to go on a walk. Even if it's down the driveway, I'm going to move my body down the driveway to get the mail <laughs> and come back. Right. I'm going to get outside and, or like at least do like five minutes of stretching, just taking bite-sized uh, chunks that you can take when you're just not feeling good, not trying to like... 180 and be the shining glory of a flower, you know, in flow. Right. <laughs> um, another thing is when I'm, I'm done is I really double down in my spiritual practices. Like I, I promise myself, for example, that I will sit in silence for five minutes or that I will do my breath work. Um, and another is if this is the hardest, I think for me is 
I will look to connect with someone. Mm -hmm. I'll force myself to send a text or even worse, like pick up the phone and call a friend, <laughs> even if it's just a chit chat or even like a voice note, just to be like, no, one of my best friends, her name's Emma. I'll, I'll just send her a voice note like, hi, Emma, like, how are you doing? Like to try and pull myself out of it, try and serve others. Um, so human connection is, is really important when you're feeling down and low. Um, but yeah, these, these are some of just the pillars, like the food, the spiritual practice, um, the working out. I, I promise myself little things um, in order to help, you know, get into another gear, into flow. <laughs> I asked that question because I even realized that I have a type of wellness and my type of wellness may not be your type of wellness. As yeah. As the next person, the next person. And I think when you really yeah. get conscious about wellness in your life or what mm -hmm. i like to call it black wellness because we are black mm. people we are black women and mm -hmm. our kind of wellness doesn't look like anybody else's wellness mm -hmm. so i i like to ask this question because i want to know if you figured out specifically what your wellness looks like absolutely you have, yeah what what does yours look like and you're you're completely right that's why again we talked about doctors and and how they aren't coming to save you yeah. it, it's a uniform they usually prescribe to you something uniform uh, versus something personalized. So it's best to know what is your wellness. I, I'm so in line with that. So what is I, yours? <laughs> mine is uh, pretty slow. Like I realized yeah. that I like to think that I can go to a boxing class and yeah. I like to do fun ah. stuff because I grew up as a tomboy playing all kinds of sports, you know, hurting myself all the time. But I, re I realized now later in my life that I, I need slower. I need yeah. stretching. I need, um, I love Pilates. I Beautiful. haven't really gotten into it, but I'm doing a little bit of yoga and try to f get into the Pilates a little more. Beautiful. I am, um, I think I like, I like building puzzles. So for me, yeah. I, it's, I do it on my screen now on my iPad only because I can't collect all of these physical puzzles, yeah. which is not good for screen time, but it takes me away yeah. from doing work work it's mm. like play on the ipad so mm. i love building puzzles i take time out to do that um food has my relationship with food has changed over the course yes. of the last few weeks i am also intermittent fasting right now mm. so that has been a huge switch and a mm -hmm. revelation in how my body is feeling it's incredible yeah it is um mm -hmm. i've been taking more supplements Mm. like way more like I have a whole laundry list of supplements mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. I've, I've started acupuncture which has yeah. really turned my life around I have to say yes. medicine is wonderful yes. and I've always <laughs> been interested but because of my diagnosis I had to do something mm. and, and mm -hmm. the, the diagnosis from western doctors and eastern doctors two mm -hmm. totally different things mm. so what once I for my western doctor I would have been on pills. I would have been on yeah. all kinds of drugs just to yeah. fix what they thought needed to fix. And in my Eastern, no, no medicine, no drugs, yeah. just tuning your body in and yeah. even simple things like paying attention to how fast I chew. Oh my gosh. So everything yes. becomes <laughs> a little bit slower for me. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. I love it. Just take it slow. And yeah, even as simple as Today I'm going to chew my food. Exactly. <laughs> this may be T TMI. I I sometimes get colonics, mm -hmm. and um, I have this wonderful colonic lady in New York, and um, she while she's giving you the there's now new colonics where you like get hooked up to a machine and the mm -hmm. practitioner leaves the room and it's like you and this machine. <laughs> but there's this, mm -hmm. there's this wonderful lady in New York who she sits with you and she massages your stomach as the process is going on, and there's kind of like a window. And she can, she can look at your, um, poop. <laughs> I don't know what other word to use. Uh, and she can see, she, she, she sees, and she's like, oh, you have not been chewing your food. Mm -hmm. I'm going to need you to chew your food more. <laughs> or like, you've been drinking too much coffee. It, I went with a friend and he was like, she saw that I've been drinking too much coffee, mm -hmm. but oh. these things are like, so important. It's, it's as simple as chew your, take some time. To you, for this hour, I'm going to eat this meal versus I'm going to eat this meal and go on my Zoom and then I'm going to go tweet and then I'm going to go like 
we are down. Talk, we live such frantic lives you now like we move from yeah. one thing to the next and we think busyness is the best thing we have to like no. look back which is why i think the pandemic yeah. was as devastating as it was for some people i think it was a blessing for a lot of other for some of them who were able to kind of slow it slow slow down all the pieces and really Amen. like think about where we wanted to go with in the next phase of our life because this mm. is the next phase you know absolutely absolutely so, so let's talk about the wines <laughs> how do you so what on what at, at what point of this evolution that nana was experiencing mm-hmm. that you got into wines like where did mm-hmm. that come from yes so it was during this year of 2018 where i started asking questions about what wellness is and each week i would write about you know meditation and um tantra and you know all these things you hear about um and uh, along the way, I, I took a trip to Costa Rica and I um, was on a permaculture farm for 10 days. I didn't wear shoes. I lived in like sarongs. And I love it. It was, like, it was like the most beautiful time. The, it was like near the equator. So everything got really dark at night. There was no like electricity. Well, there was electricity, but it was like, it was in like a city. It was the middle of nowhere on the Car- right. Caribbean side of the nation. And I, and you could feel the darkness at night. Like you could like hug the trees. It was an amazing time. Oh, wow. And in the corner of the permaculture farm was this, this, section where you know these girls would go in and you know they'd come out and they'd have these tinctures and I was like what is a tincture (laughs) and they'd be like oh if you take this this will like you know cure your stomach aches this one is for if you're stressed out just boil it or brew it or you know it they were teaching me the power of plants which is a field called herbalism and you spoke about this earlier that you know, this knowledge of herbs and botanicals, it's in us. Mm-hmm. Uh, and more, some people are more drawn to it than others. I believe it's a lineage. And if you ever hear that herbalism exists, um, people who are drawn to it, it just like something's like obvious that like, oh, that's exactly what I need to be doing. <laughs> uh, I obviously need to be healing with plants that, you know, this was our first medicine. Mm-hmm that if this was like thousands of years ago, you would have been the woman in the village who would, if someone's sick, go to the forest or you were the grandmother who would know which bark to peel and boil and give it to, you know, um, whoever has an ailment, it's a lineage. Mm -hmm. And so um, I obviously, my dad's a doctor and to this day, he still wonders when I'm going to medical school, which (laughs) uh, (laughs) I'm like, I'm I'm probably not going, (laughs) but it it is something I think that runs in my family that we are healers Mm -hmm. and um, herbalism is, is an application of this. And when, as soon as I, learned that herbalism existed and that is the power and knowledge of how plants and herbs heal I just knew that that was me that was your thing. and so I came back from Costa Rica and I started apprenticing with different herbalists uh, in New York City and the Catskills and um I I just learned their ways and unlike you know like a medical school there are there are now universities and programs you can get certified to become an herbalist but these older elder herbalists, none mm. of them went to school. It's, it's the, the world is your classroom. You can literally right. go outside in your yard and there's plant medicine everywhere. And it's, it's something you self-teach and it's something you sit with elders and they teach you. Mm. And the way to teach and to learn isn't by necessarily saying, you know, like if you like this, the, like how science teaches, like the chemistry of it. And there certainly is chemistry and herbalists talk about it and the biology of it. But it's through folklore and, and stories that the way they pass down how these herbs and plants heal are, are through stories. Upstate um, is really good for that, though. Upstate New York. Really yeah, it's that. beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's wonderful. For example, there's an herb called yarrow. And it's known to, if you're bleeding, it helps stop bleeding. It's just like a very like warrior medicine that if you were in the field of battle thousands of years ago, you'd have yarrow in your pocket and it would be like a Band-Aid, right? And um, the way we, we learned, or I learned about it from an herbalist is, so that's the science of it. It's like some healing, you know, helps stop bleeding. Herb, but the way you know I was taught it was that Achilles, um, as you know, I, he was half god, half mortal, or mm-hmm. he was mortal born from gods, mm-hmm. and um, his mother knew that his only um, his only his only weakness was 
Um, he was strong and, and immortal all over his body, except at his ankle. And so um, he was mortal. <laughs> and in order to make him strong and practically immortal, his mother brewed a pot of yarrow, oh. took him by the ankle and dipped him in it. But because she was holding him by the ankle, um, his ankle was the only vulnerable place. That's you've heard of like an Achille, Achilles oh, heel. Oh, that's and what so, I think. Oh. Yeah, and, it, and because uh, he was dipped in yarrow, yarrow became known as this plant that strengthens you in war. And like, uh, and that's, that's how I learned about, about the plant through these folklore tales of you know, Achilles and his mom. And all of these different herbs have different uh, mythologies around them. And it, it's just so fun to learn about. Um, but how did wine come about this? <laughs> so herbal wines are a, um, a component of herbalism mm -hmm. that the way we used to take our medicine was through wine that, you know, there's a, the, there's a lot about, uh, alcohol that's wrong and, and that's bad, but just like everything else in moderation, mm -hmm. alcohol actually has healing properties yeah. that, um, for example, when it comes to herbs, um, when sat in alcohol, uh, the cell walls open up and the vitamins and the minerals and the mm -hmm. medicine comes out into uh, the alcohol and you can take drops of it um, as medicine. Mm -hmm. um, you know, water is also a substrate that you can put herbs in and, you know, the medicine comes out. Um, oils are, uh, they're all just different ways of getting different minerals and uh, medicines that you want out. Mm -hmm. So herbal wines at the start were, you know, medicinal. Mm -hmm. um, that we didn't have aspirin. <laughs> and so, especially the woman at the head of the household was responsible for brewing the house's herbal wine. Mm -hmm. And she would use healing herbs and botanicals. And that's how um, the family members would fortify their health, especially because wine was, a, I'm sorry, especially because water wasn't safe to drink. Right. You would get your hydration and more nutrients um, through herbal wines. And their cousin to kombucha and mead, and as soon as I learned about them, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. Kombucha is amazing. About I love it. Yeah, it's so oh cool. The, yeah. As soon as I learned about them, as soon as I tasted them, mm -hmm. I was like, how does this not exist in market? Right. <laughs> how do we not know about herbal wines? And of course, you know, I've heard of herbalists, um, you know, brewing these and something in, I was inspired to bring these out into the world. And so I, I started an herbal wine company. And I've lowered the alcohol so they're not, you know, 15, 14% like traditional grape wine, wine. Mm -hmm. um, they're a bit lower, they're low in sugar, low in sulfites, low in calories. And I'm really just tapping into this tradition of making wine out of flowers that has been since ancient Egypt, the Greeks, Romans, Africans, Chinese, every culture has some tradition of fermenting herbs and botanicals and I'm bringing it back. Yes, thank you. It's that was been, so long. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, uh, so are the wines the same consistency as like kombucha that has a bit of a, mm, uh, like a fizz or is it? Yeah, that? great yeah? question. No, they, uh, well, you, you can, you can make them fizzy. So uh -huh. the fizz comes from uh, fermentation. CO2 is a byproduct of fermentation. Mm -hmm. And so you can make these to have a fizz. Um, when I first started making them, I did. Um, but these are the ones that are on market. I have hibiscus wine and marigold flower wine. Mm -hmm. And they are, they're flat. They, they are very similar to grape wine wine, but they have something different to them. Mm -hmm. Like the hibiscus, hibiscus is traditionally tart. And so you're going to get that tartness, that floral mm -hmm. marigold, uh, the marigold flower wine is a bit more smooth. Um, there's a pear and an apple. Um, so they taste a little bit similar to wine, grape wine, um, except there's a little, there's always like a little twist to them okay. where, um, because it's a different, it's not wine grapes. Um, each of these herbs and botanicals sing differently. So you're going to get a little difference than traditional wine that you're used to tasting. Okay. And where, mm -hmm. where are they being distributed? Can we get them? Are they everywhere now? Like yeah, so I launched last year in February. And I, I love, like, my favorite part of this business has been product developing and, you know, brewing these alongside my partner um, in Napa, uh, you know, making the actual making and playing with the herbs. Mm -hmm. 
the alcohol industry in America and the world is so regulated. Yeah. Um, there is a culture that stems from prohibition that, you know, starting wine, beer, any kind of mm -hmm. alcohol company is it's extremely hard and it's extremely regulated. Um, and so I launched with all that I, I could, which is only to a certain amount of states. And as I continue to grow, my access to different states grows because I get more licenses. But mm -hmm. for now, I'm online direct to consumer. Okay. And uh, later this year, I'm going to look to land a distributor and hopefully get into retail and restaurants. But I launched um, through, through um, direct to consumer licenses. That's good. Mm -hmm. um, where can we find the wine? What's the website? <laughs> Yes, you can find them at drinknavina.com. <laughs> I like that name. Where did it come from? Yeah, so Navina, it's actually my name, Nana, with that in the middle, and that in French is um, wine. But to me, the name Navina sounds like, as I said, there's a lot of mythology around winemaking mm -hmm. and herbs and botanicals that, you know, the Greeks and the Romans had gods and goddesses of wine. And, you know, America doesn't have these like deep stories and folklore around wine. So, you know, to me, the name is if America were ever to have a goddess of wine, I, her name would be Navina. I, so, <laughs> I, I will begin to tell stories of this goddess Navina and that, you know, there's so much, um, there's so much storytelling when it comes to winemaking and herbs that I'm going to use this opportunity to infuse that name with, you know, uh, Navina as the American goddess of wine. <laughs> I'll remember that. And if anybody asks me, I'll be sure to tell them too. I'll yeah, be, thank you. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> this is such, this is so great. Do you actually stomp the wines? Like, I feel like if I went to like, if I come to Napa, like I would <laughs> actually like, stomp the grapes so I could get, to, get into the essence of winemaking. <laughs> oh my gosh. So when I was product developing these, I, I apprenticed at a, a, and a distiller, a woman distiller in the North Fork of New York. And I actually got a chance to stomp grapes. Uh, we made like a small batch of wine and we each took turns, like everyone at the, at the distillery <laughs> each took turns to stomp grapes. And if you ever have the opportunity to do that in your life, please do. It's like the most grounding earthy thing you could do, like making your own food and like your own drink, mm -hmm. <laughs> like stomping these grapes and making wine. I will. Um, you have to share, you have to share that. Cool. You have to share that this still information with me. So I can, I can it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, for now, I'm partnering with a winemaker out in Napa. And as soon as I, you know, raise enough money i hope to have my own standalone winery um but for now i'm, I'm working with someone well we are here we are behind you we are here thank to you. support you i'm going to be able to share this with my thank friend. you so much um any <laughs> travels yeah you have any uh future plans to travel to new york soon or anything yes and when i do i'll bring you a bottle please do yes <laughs> i'd love to meet yes. up anyway Yes, please, please. So you're much like in my, common. You're like my wellness people. Like, yeah. oh, I know. We need yeah. to stay. Like, I'm telling you, it's community is such yes. a big part of all this. So, yes, I would love to. Absolutely. <laughs> we should do like a meet and greet. We'll do a meet and greet and have everyone listening come if they'd yeah. like. <laughs> Let me know. I, I plan to do a launch soon. I want to launch oh. the brand here in New York. Yes. Make it like a big affair and have all these oh. lovely black women you know so oh my gosh let's do it keep me posted i'm there that's okay. amazing okay. so needed i will let you know yeah yes <laughs> well nana this was so great i hope we can keep in touch um yes <laughs> i want everybody to know drinknavina.com please check it thank out you. um buy the wine please support <laughs> thank you <laughs> the herbal wine and i have to say yes this wine is for me because I do not drink alcohol. My body cannot yes. handle it. And yes. I feel like because it's close so to low. temperature, it mm -hmm, will be perfect mm -hmm. for me. So oh, I'll definitely thank you so much. find it out. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. You're very, very welcome. <laughs> I'll, we'll talk very soon. We'll be in touch. Yes. Yes. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. Uh, have a good one. <laughs> you too. <laughs> hey guys. Thanks for listening to Well Black Sis. If you like the show, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts. It helps other women striving to be well to find the show. If you want to hear more from our community, you can follow on Instagram at wellblacksis and check out the website at wellblacksis.com 
to find out what exciting meetup we have next. You can also sign up for the Web Access newsletter to make sure you don't miss out on future Web Access updates. Talk to you soon.